that's where I started like printing all my designs and making samples. So I build my portfolio from there. I make a like a book. And then I started pitching to two different companies. Okay. But that really helped to have like the physical samples. Like I took all the pictures and I sent mm. them. So, so that was the way I, I started doing it. I am so, so excited to be talking today with Stephanie Organis. She is a talented quilter and fabric designer who I first met in 2020 when she took my Start Your Surface Pattern business course. She is based in Mexico City and her fabric lines, which is licensed with Andover Fabrics, is so joyful and colorful. The creations that she sews with them, you guys can see it in the background. I'm just so excited to learn more about her journey. Hi, Stephanie. Hi, Elizabeth. Thank you so much <laughs> for having me. I was so exciting, excited to, to chat with you. I'm so Long excited time. to chat with you. <laughs> um, so to start, can you give us a brief overview of how you got into designing for fabrics and the other products and where you are now? Just a, just a kind of overview. Yes. Um, well, I started designing fabrics like well first I, I learned to sew because I, I my daughter was born 2016 and a little bit later I started sewing uh, I've never sewn before like I, I was very intimidated by sewing and I'm, I'm my background is I'm a graphic designer and I used to work in advertising so when she was born I needed like a creative outlet I needed to start doing something else because I was I wasn't working anymore so I started, I have like a beautiful quilt shop near my house. So I, I took my first class and from there, like I was like hooked, like I really, really love, enjoy it. And I started like doing like all, you know, tutorials in YouTube and learning all the things. And, and, and yeah, that's, that's how I started. I um, well, first sewing. And that was like how I began in, yeah, in, in quilting. And um, from there, I started doing um, a lot of bags. I still I started selling online and in craft fairs, like bags for your for your diaper bag and things to organize the, your kids stuff. And so that was what I really enjoyed doing, like sewing bags and all all things. And from there, I well then we have the pandemic. So during the pandemic, well, before that, I went to Quilcom. That is a convention uh, for modern quilting. And that's when, like, I saw all the fabrics and the, they were like, like this world unfolded for me. It was mm -hmm. like, what is this? It, it was amazing. So then when the pandemic hit, um, I realized that what I really enjoyed doing and that what I really was drawn to about sewing was the, were the fabrics, like the patterns and like all the... Like I always loved like pattern paper and I used to do scrapbooking and like if I see like a beautiful pouch like you know with flowers I buy it like I, I've been yeah. always drawn to to these graphic um yeah patterns like I really love that so that's when I realized that that I wanted to start creating my my own collections that I could that I was a designer that I could create my own fabrics my own fabric collections and uh yeah and and then i found you in during the um, <laughs> the pandemic um i took your course it was 2020 mm -hmm. uh in i don't remember i said it was august or september yeah but the fall yeah it, it was the first course that i took in surface pattern design um and i really loved it i remember my husband telling me uh because I love how you structure everything. You are so organized. And, and he was like, this is the perfect course for you. <laughs> because I'm more scattered. And, and he was like, no, she has like, I remember like how you have like all the, well, how you explain the whole course and everything. So he was uh, telling me, he, he pushed me to to take your your course. Oh, I got to send him a thank oh. you note. <laughs> yes. He was like, no, it's very business driven. And yeah, you have to take it. And that, but that, but by that time I was taking a course in fabric design in a university where I studied in London many years ago but they were doing like uh short courses online uh so I was taking this textile course and then I found yours so it was like the perfect uh complement nice. so so yeah and and I started uh well I'm gonna tell you that a little bit later yeah. but 
yeah, that's how I, I, Got I work it. fabric. Uh-huh. Exactly. Yeah. All right. So, and then, so then you started pitching your work and that's how you connected with your, your fabric partner. Is that, is that true? Yes, what I did was uh, when I took your course, um, I started doing my collections because I also took your course. I, um, the fabric, the, no, it's not fabric collection, it's collection. Successful licensing collections, right? Yeah. The licensing collection as well. So I remember I was, uh, I started making, yeah, my, like my own designs and I opened, well, I didn't open it. It was not public. That's a Spoonflower shop. Mm -hmm. So that's where I started like printing all my designs and making samples. Like I send the fabric to Mexico and I start sewing uh, bags and yeah, I have diff like different samples that I started um, that I made. So I build my portfolio from there. I make a like a book and then I started pitching to to different companies. Okay. But that really helped to have like the physical samples. Like I took all the pictures and I send them. Mm. So, so that was the way I, I started doing it. I love that. So I've been a service designer for, you know, my whole career, but the thing that I definitely am not is a sewer. <laughs> I cannot <laughs> sew. I have tried because I have fabrics. I have so many fabrics. I've done some small projects, but I love that that is how you got into the industry. And I know, you know, I've talked to so many other uh, talented quilters who, um, or sewists who have then, you know, wanted to take it to the next level. Um, my question is, do you have any like big takeaways from your transition of like, as a user of fabrics, right? Someone who makes these beautiful quilts, which we can see in your background. And I've seen also your, the bags that you made and, you know, you're just so talented. Someone who uses fabrics into someone who, designs for fabrics have you noticed anything like like you know maybe when you think about how you use it because I don't use the fabrics that I design so I know that there are there must be some things that that you've noticed uh around that yeah I mean it was it was really helpful to, like to be us to be a quilter because at the end of the day I I when I started designing my uh I'm printing when I found out about spoon flower that you could print it was amazing because I started like when I was doing maybe like a bag or a quilt if I needed more blenders I designed another one and then I printed and so that's it was like very custom made so I was like oh I need another blender so I'm gonna make a new one or maybe if the color didn't match I was like no this was too dark I send it maybe lighter or, you know, so it, it was really helpful to play like in real life with the, with the fabric because you can sometimes do mock-ups and everything, but I think it's really, I mean, it's, it's good to have the skill also to what you design because there are different, like, you know, there are the hero, the hero patterns, and then we have coordinates, but it's good to, to have different scales and maybe think when you're designing something like, for example, I have this one that it has swans. No, I, I wanted in that collection that the swans could be like fussy cut. So I, I think it, it helps to know a little bit uh, depending on the on the industry you're you're working on. But right. for so it really helped. Uh -huh. And that's really how it started. Like, um, well, yeah, I, I was in love for all the patterns. And yeah, that's cool. I love that. I love that. Uh, so, I mean, we talked about it a little bit, but there are definitely a number of sewists who have become interested in creating in their own fabrics, but definitely making that leap is not an easy leap to make because, you know, there's a lot of people looking to license fabrics, including people who don't sew like myself. <laughs> um, so how were you able to forge that partnership with your current fabric partner? It's, it sounds like making some of those samples had a big yes big and big and part. yeah it one hike it, it helped making like an actual portfolio um like I have a portfolio and I didn't send it because I'm in Mexico and the shipping and everything is super complicated so at the end I have like my physical portfolio and I went uh to Quilcon that was the first one after the pandemic so there was not a lot of people there but the few companies that were there I I show my portfolio like in like 
in physical and I have all my samples like I was wearing my bag I have like a jacket and so like I was my own brand like you yeah. know dress up with all my my brand so that really helped and also I sent what I did is I made like a branded folder and and just printed out the some of the pages of my portfolio no not all of them but like most of them and and that way I send them like I I uh I send it to different companies and and that's how how it work out like and and following up and um and and send them something physical I think it it worked like my sister she lives in in New York so I went and visited her and I, I was there so I just sent the the portfolio to Andover that they are in New York and yeah, I'm following up, like I was sending emails, hey, did you receive my folder? And and I think they didn't answer. And then I have, uh, like I was talking to other companies, but I, I really wanted to work with them. And I was like, hey, did you send, like receive my, my portfolio? Like a few, I don't remember if it was maybe a couple of months later. And then they answer like, like, yeah, we love it. And so, so yeah, that's how I we, love this. I story. Okay. I, yeah. There's so many things in there that I love. Okay. First of all, the physical, first yeah. of all, you went to, you went to a quilt con. So that makes a big difference because you yeah. got to meet with people in person. Um, the, you know, mailing something physical. I really love, you know, I mean, I talk about that too, of like, it, you know, it's so easy to send an email now and we are lucky that we can send emails, but you certainly stand out by sending something in the mail That's, and, mm -hmm. you know, you going above and beyond, you know, I, I say, oh, you could send like a postcard or you can send some sort of, you know, art, you know, something that has your art printed on it, like something folded or whatever, but to have a whole folder with actual pages that show your art on sales sheets and things like that, I'm sure it was very impressive. <laughs> um, and and so sending, and then of course the following up, that's something that I'm always telling people. It's hard to follow up when you don't hear anything and, and having that persistence to keep going and saying, Hey, hello, hello. And then finally getting that, that, yeah, we love it is, oh, that must've been so exciting. Yeah. And, and yeah, because we always, well, for me, I'm always like afraid of, of, I don't want to be like, Hey, like sending emails all the time, but, but yeah, you have to do it. And I think I mean, if they are bothered, well, that's not your people. So, yeah. and sometimes they're super busy. So that's why they don't answer back. So, so yeah, it, it's just following up. And I'm so glad they did it because I was in between something else. And then I was like, no, I really want to work with them. So, so yeah, at the end, it, it worked out. And when I went to QuillCon, um, also like this, like, um, it, it how you say that like it took me out from my comfort zone like mm -hmm. because it was it was not easy to go and approach the companies and when you see the booth that it's full you you walk by and it's like okay now I'm gonna come back later and mm -hmm. carry all your stuff nervous, well, yeah I mean at the end I didn't work for any of those companies that were there but it really helped me like it it helped me like to to speak up and to show my work and and, and what another thing that have come up from from Quilcon that was really amazing is I met from a friend that introduced me um Jill Packham I don't know if you know her she she's the owner of um what women create magazine oh, so okay. I, I I I sent you the article but well, I met her and um, and I was carrying my bags and my quills and and my friend introduced me to her and she was telling her like, oh, Stephanie, she's making, look, all her samples and they were printed on spoon flour and blah, blah, blah. And she was like, oh, this is so cute. I like it. And so she was like, oh, I would love to have you in my magazine. And I was like, oh, really? I was like, so so she I had an article at, at the magazine that I also I talked about you in in the magazine I, I mentioned you because I your course like really really helped me out so so they asked me about teachers and I was like yeah Elizabeth Silver oh. so 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 yeah and it was really it, it was really nice so I think also that really helped like um well the article at the end of the magazine like open a little bit more for me that that more people get to know my work so so it's you never know like how things are gonna like one thing exactly. you know like I don't know I love, that. I love that no so many great points there because yeah it is it can be super scary I've you know I've been doing this for a long time but <clears throat> 
it is scary to 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 put yeah. yourself out there. It still can be scary for me. Um, you know, I it's not always easy for me to just get myself in there and just try to talk to people and so I can understand especially someone who who is new to the industry um yourself or other designers who are even newer being really nervous about it but you know getting to getting in those spaces and feeling comfortable talking about your work is a really important part of running a creative business you need to be able to show be feel like you're showing off, you know, we've, we're often taught like, you know, not to brag about yourself or not to, you know, show off or something like that. And look, my son, (laughs) you should hear him. He is so, he's such a, he is always talking about how great he is. Basically he's only eight. So I give him a little, (laughs) but part of me, part of me wants to say, Hey, knock it off. No one likes someone who's bragging, but the other part of me is like, he's going to be an amazing businessman at some point exactly. because he can. Yeah, he can and that he has like a very good self esteem and, and he believes in himself. That's exactly. Good. Confidence is just so important. Okay. So, but we are often just, just even knowing what I know now as an adult who has to talk about myself a lot. <laughs> <laughs> and talk about my work and whatever, even knowing that, you know, we kind of, it's still sort of ingrained of like, all right, calm down. You don't need to be so excited about yourself, but you kind of do because you're your biggest cheerleader. So I love that. Exactly. Um, and that kind of brings me to my next question, because besides, you know, being an awesome fabric designer, you always go now you know you go I always see you on Instagram going to quilt con you do Mm -hmm. tutorials you do workshops around sewing and things like that and so I was wondering you know does sharing your work and your knowledge come naturally to you or is this something that you've just been building and and getting used to as the opportunities have come along yes I think it's something that it keeps building because at the beginning I remember like I said like I I didn't see myself as teaching anything like I'm I'm like a pretty new sewist and or well quilter so I'm still learning there's so many techniques and quilting has been for ages and and there's uh like quilters have more knowledge than me Mm -hmm. um so it, it was it was um I mean now like for example this time that I want to quilt on uh, it was last February. Uh, I teach. Uh, I taught like like four small classes, so I really enjoyed them. I was like, oh, this is something that I can start doing. Like it, it's it's funny how you start like challenging yourself and and see yourself all the things that you can do. And and you, you, every time you start building a little bit more of that of that confidence and I also like the quilting community is amazing like I I think it's a very warm and welcoming community so that makes it easier and 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 we are like introverts like we like to sew and at the end you start like we really enjoy fabric and quilting so we we speak the same language so at the end that really helps because you you are like among your your people and like, I remember the first quilt come that I won that it was in Pasadena, that was 2018 or something. Like I went there alone because I happened to be in, in LA. So, but I didn't know anyone. And the second one I didn't, that I was, um, I think that was before pandemic then to, um, Austin. And then I met a few people from Mexico city that there was a guild here and I met them there. And then the next time that I went after the pandemic, they, I mean, I started make, meeting more people. And, and, and this week that I went, it was I have so many dinners and it was it was so much fun. Like it, it keeps building like all the people that you meet. And I mean, I, I think the community is great. Yeah, I love that. Um, so how. So, you know, you were just saying that last uh, last QuiltCon, you taught some classes and um, mm-hmm. you also were explaining about your your article with uh, What Women Create. Is that who? It, no, What Women Create. That's What Women Create. <laughs> they, have two, they have What Women Create and Where Women Create. Yeah. Oh, okay. Um, so 
for the for the teaching the classes and stuff did you actively pursue that or how basically do you have any tips about getting press or collaborations as a new designer because it seems like besides those i've seen some other features that you've had and you're you know you are out there which i love so i'm curious you know for a new designer yeah, I what think, tips you have i think it's 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 um like all the com there are so many companies that have a booth there so it's it's if you ask like I think we're always afraid to ask mm -hmm. and and for me it, this one I had a new uh, thread line uh, with Wonderfield they're an, an, a Canadian company thread company so we were like promoting they have these different lines from artists that you can make your own palette your own thread thread box so Is that what I'm seeing behind you those beautiful pinks yes. behind you yeah, these are all my colors and I'm like very pink and purple yes. yeah so this is my my like my basic line that I want that goes that goes uh with all my collections oh my gosh so so they were going to have a booth there and we wanted to promote the line so they asked me like oh Stephanie can you give some uh they're called make and takes um if you want to teach something and I was like okay I like I've never done that I was like I was a little bit nervous but I was like okay let's do it and and they told me, okay, you're going to do four. And I was like, four? <laughs> like, for an hour each. Uh -huh. So at the end, I have like, it was like 12 people in each, um, 12 to 13 people in, in, but it was so much fun. I I, I taught like two different techniques. Uh, and and I mean, I don't know if they, I mean, I guess they they like it, they enjoy it and they stay there with me. <laughs> so, um, but it was, it was so much fun. And, um, and yeah, I, I think, uh, all you need to do is ask. Like, I mean, I didn't taught like in the workshops. For that, you have to apply directly to the MQG to to say, okay, I want to do one a class and everything, and you have to apply. I think they already closed for next year. You know that that mm -hmm. takes a lot. Of, but like all the boots that are there, they're willing to like to give classes and things like that because that brings a lot of people in. So you can ask if you have something that you want to teach. Like for me, I taught. Uh, English paper piecing and applique. These are two techniques, no? Mm -hmm. So if you want to teach something on, or, or surf, I mean, spoon flower was there. So maybe you can ask, hey, can I teach something and like do a meet and greet or do like a make and take on a surface design in Procreate, for example. Mm -hmm. No, you can show them, I don't know, that like every, like all the boots have people and designers or quilters that are out there showing things. So it's never... I mean, you can always ask. And I love that. You can always, I mean, that's a exactly. great and takeaway. No, it's okay, but maybe they say yes. So it's 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 good. And it's a good opportunity to meet to meet people. I love that. That's amazing. Yeah. Um so we can I can just tell by I mean everyone who, who might watch this can tell from looking at your background which is beautiful pinks and purples and so gorgeous of all those wonderful yeah. quilts everywhere but oh just God. like just like your fabrics your Instagram also is like candy coated like it's so like pinks and purples and and beautiful gorgeous quilts colorful patterns um it's like I just want to live in it <laughs> so <laughs> my you. question uh is have you know how have you kind of learned to embrace social media as part of your business? Because that does seem to be an important part of, um, you know, any creatives business at this point. Um, and, and certainly you do an incredible job with it. So. I thank you. I have been learning like, like, because I do everything, like I do my social media, I do my collections and I do everything. So it, uh, I mean, I wish I was posting more, like, I think I need to be like more consistent, uh, <laughs> I, I really want to uh like a lot of people have suggested me like oh Stephanie you should hire like a social media manager and, and yeah maybe I should but uh <laughs> at the end like I I really enjoy taking the pictures making the reels writing the posts like I I, I want to be there because that's how I I meet people and uh and a lot of people who uses my fabric reaches out and they write to me or send me pictures of, of things they do, they make with my with my fabric. So like I really want to be there, you know? So yeah, so, I hear you. Yeah. 
So that's why, uh, well, I try to do my posts and everything, but I can't post as much as often as I like to. Like I, I, I try like, because when I'm doing like a collection, I, like I'm immersed doing the collection and social media for me takes a lot of time to editing pictures and making the reels and everything. So I try to be present in stories, like when people tag me, like I always like to share their work. So that's the way I, I try to be there. But I mean, there's a lot of people who are very consistent and they post yes. three times a week. Sometimes I post one times a week or maybe less. Yeah. I don't know. It depends. It depends. Um, also, if I'm on an event, I try to post like all the things of the event. Uh, but yeah, it, it, it is a lot of work. Like social media, it is a lot of work. But I really enjoy it also because... Uh, yeah, that's a way how I, I connect. Yeah, no, it's well, true. Connect, and I have like so many Instagram friends now that I met right now in in Rally and QuillCon, and it was amazing because it really felt that I met like I know them for years. You know, it's like know. my husband. He's like Stephanie. Why do you have so many meetings and dinners? And I was, and I was like, yeah, because I have so many new friends that I want to meet in real life. <laughs> it's a lot of work social media sometimes it could be yeah yeah hard. well I think that's you know it sounds like you have a great attitude about it though because I mean yeah you can't if you can't do it all the time that's fine you just do what you can do yeah. and and you're getting up your work and and what I love is that one look at your pro you know one look at your feed and it's like we we understand what you do because it's so representative of all your gorgeous artwork so you know whether it's one post or or you know multiple it doesn't really matter because yeah. seeing it you can see how how great it is so I'm I mean I feel like the what's the name like the algorithm like punishes me sometimes because yeah. you have more uh, yeah when you have uh, are interacting you have more traction mm -hmm. and yeah, then I, I don't post maybe for two weeks so maybe when I post I don't have those many I don't uh, not many people see it so that's right. I mean it's not the best advice what I'm saying but but yeah, at the end, I'm, I'm trying to have peace with it. And I was like, okay, I'm going to share what I want to share. And I don't want to stress because it is a lot of work. So, I so yeah. That. I love that. <laughs> um, so now I want to know, because obviously you got other things going on, but <laughs> do you still sew products for sale or um, do you like, so you used to, I believe, have like an Etsy shop where you were doing those bags and stuff like that. Now you have your own fabric lines. Are you doing other licensed projects? Like kind of tell us where you are now as far as what your like income sources are or, or you know, what you're doing for sale, basically. Yes, I, I'm, I'm not selling bags anymore. Like I, that's something I would love to because I have all, like all my fabric. And so that's like in my bucket list that I want to do uh, at least do. Like I would love to make like a... Um, uh, cosmetic bags and things like that when, so I can sell them but I haven't had it anymore like I, I still like I saw my I saw my samples uh, and I have friends that help me out with sewing because yeah, sometimes it becomes too much like um, I mean when you put a collection out there it's I mean the, the best way to sell it is to show people how to how to use it and ideas and everything so I try to most samples that, that I can but sometimes when I get the fabric uh, my company and over there like okay that's all new so let's move on to the next one and I was like but I just got my fabric I want to play with it and I was yeah. like no honey the, the, that collection's already all for, for us you know because right, have they already have it it's already started to be in store already have it and yeah. it's already in store so I was like oh, I want to play with it so it, it's uh -huh, it's I, I have people both friends who are helping me out to sew because yeah I, I, I love that and fine, then so you're talking about your thread line so do you have other licenses or other like uh lines or things that you're in development or are coming out or are you is no, it all I, about the fabrics yes I'm totally in in fabric like I would love to uh maybe do like a paper a wrapping paper wrapping like for gifts yeah uh -huh. like or maybe another industry but I haven't had the time like my husband he's like Stephanie you should like try pitching in different companies but I haven't had the time yeah <laughs> that's was... fair that's fair no <laughs> but, yeah, I would love to see it like I've done my is, is the a fabric keeping you 
mostly busy and the and like workshops and things like that are also I mean of course you have kids too I heard you say yes. and stuff like that so so family things as well exactly. I'm sure I, I have two small kids my older one she's seven and then the youngest is uh four mm. so I work in the morning like in the morning is when I, I'm doing all quilting fabric and everything and when they come back from school that it's time for the kids so yeah. So yeah, I don't have time for everything. Like I, I six, six and an eight year old, so I I know how it goes. Yeah, like I did. Look, like I, this is with one of my collections, but I did it like for myself and and to give away and things like that. Uh, but I would love to have my yeah my collections in yeah like in uh, paper. In yeah, paper, stationary paper, planners. Stationary. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Some maybe someday. Yeah. <laughs> no rush. You'll get there. I love it. Yeah. Um, so now that you've been in the industry for a while and you have, you know, have a established fabric partner, what is one thing that surprised you about art licensing? Has there been anything that, that you weren't expecting when you first got into this? Um, well, by the different courses that I took, took, yeah, that I took, um, I don't know, sometimes I, I think, like for me, it work out uh, that you don't need to to be like very specific in a program. For example, that was my case because everybody tells you you need to do Illustrator or Photoshop or I don't know. It, it depends. Right. But for me, at the end, uh, I mean, I work in Procreate and well, everything's by hand, and then Procreate and Illustrator, and. Um, but you don't need to necessarily if you're like an artist that you paint and everything you can submit your work like that it depends totally on your on your company so for me that was really eye-opening because I think sometimes we're like so that thing yeah that people ask me like at least once a day do I have to have illustrator and me personally I use illustrator I love illustrator but do no you don't have to <laughs> you don't exactly. have to exactly totally especially so if you're you not if you paint and your work is not like, I like to do things that are kind of more flat-ish. I don't know. But if you like to paint, then Illustrator is not the program for you. That's not going to work. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. So I think we we really worry about that. So that was like really eye-opening for me that because at the end, what they need from me, it's a JPEG in high res. Oh, and really? Interesting. Uh -huh. and, and they have this special program that it's for textile and they, I don't know if they redrew everything, but so it, at the end, if you want just to, yeah, to scan paint, something, you could scan something in high res. Yes, yeah. yeah, exactly. So that was really, I was like, oh, That's interesting. That depends on the company. Cause yeah, I mean, my fabric partner, I work with Camelot and I always submit an illustrator because that's how I design, but they often um they have an in-house team so sometimes they will make some adjustments like mm. they'll shrink down the repeats or they'll I've seen them make s some tweaks or color things and I know that they do it in illustrator but I suppose even if they had the jpegs because one recent collection I had some texture stuff so I did it in photoshop and they were able to use it so yeah it really just depends that's interesting yeah 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 and um what else about that um I don't know. It, it also helped me a lot. Like I think you be you become like real really attached to your work, and um, and it's well for me it's been really good to have someone else uh, to have another view on it. So mm. sometimes we make some adjustments. I mean, what you see is what I design, but sometimes we play with color, and it's amazing. Like I I think that that really also like enriches my my work and helps me like get out of get my a little feedback and exactly yeah. so that uh -huh. exactly I love that I love that well my last question is you know I'm sure people who would watch this interview would be like want to be where you are <laughs> or definitely <laughs> want to be where you are so what advice would you give to a designer who is where you were in 2020 who is who is maybe they can sew uh and and they're starting to think like oh what I actually really love is the fabrics and the patterns what advice would you give to a new surface designer yeah like I remember when I was in in your course in 2020 
Like you really, like you really helped me out with the imposter syndrome. Like that is something that we have to work on. And I remember when you were telling us that we have to write like our bio and I was like, but I can put here like I'm a surface designer because I'm not there yet. And, and that really helped me like, like believing that I could do things. Another thing is like try different mediums. That's something that I recommend. I remember when I was taking your course, I was doing my first collections in watercolor. Uh, but as much as I love it, I'm not good at it. So it was so good that I tried it out. And um, so I think it's very good to try, to try everything that you like at the end. Like for me, I, I do everything in pencil. Like I love sketching and everything. So that's how it works for me. And maybe for you, it's in a different way. So I think that's, I mean, even if you like something very much, you have to admit when you're good and when you're not that very good, you know? So, <laughs> yeah, no, you're right. I love water. Great. <laughs> yeah, like for me, watercolor, I love it. Like, but it's more like a creative outlet for me because I, I think it's not my style. And uh, well, follow up with the, what I said at the beginning, like, yeah, don't be afraid to reach out and to send emails. And and it's it's uncomfortable. Like when I was at the at QuiltCon, I remember like, oh, hi, and they greet you well, and then it's like, oh, I'm a graphic designer, I want to show my portfolio, and it's like, oh, you are always like afraid of the response, but it doesn't matter, follow up, and, and it's like, it's, yeah, you, it, it helps, and it, it gets better every time, and sending emails as, as well, like pitching gets better, gets easier, and then another one is niche down, niche down, like choose your your industry, your product category. Yeah, I remember product. that so well in the first modules yeah. from your course. And yeah, at the beginning, I always wanted fabric. And and I mean, I want to do stationery and so many things, but I mean. Starting with one thing. I do. Now, exactly. when you pitch, when you do have the time and you pitch yourself for stationery and you can show off all the things you've done in fabric, it's going to, I mean, I know it's not the exact same thing, but it doesn't matter. They're going to, that's, you, you have a stronger leg to stand on. And also you're more comfortable with pitching, but you're going to exactly. be able to say, look, I already do all this and now I'm ready to get into stationery and they're going to be, they're going to like it. <laughs> exactly. You already have like a huge portfolio. And, and when you have fabric, you can use it for whatever else you want. So, and, and you have it there. So, so yeah, I think that's good to, to focus first on, on one. And then it was, well, be, con be consistent and uh and and yeah overcome the imposter syndrome and be consistent like work every every day i have a phrase here that i remember and i brought it down from your course that it says the secret to getting ahead is getting started mm. and and yeah and it keeps building up like try doing something every every single day like writing and like i remember like updating your linkedin and things like that like maybe it doesn't feel that much but but it gets gets you closer you know there, there are like small tiny steps that that at the end be, builds something big so so yeah I think those are mine those are great I mean the all great advice. <laughs> <laughs> no I love that that is so wonderful well it's been incredible learning more about your journey um, I cannot wait to see how things evolve for you because, um, you know, I just love seeing your work and I will put your links in the description so people can check out your Instagram and your, your gorgeous fabric collections and your website and everything like that. Thank you so much for joining me, Stephanie. I uh, thank you for having me. Hi, I'm Elizabeth Silver, and I've been a professional surface pattern designer for almost two decades. When I left my in-house design job to run my own business, I had a lot of industry experience, but building a strong client base still took way longer than I expected. And part of that was because there's both a lot and not enough information out there about how to do this. You've been down the Google rabbit hole, you know. Fast forward to now when I sometimes turn down client work because I'm booked solid. It's for that exact reason that I created Start Your Surface Pattern Business. In this course, I help you cut through the overwhelm and give you a super clear path to becoming a paid surface pattern designer. I provide you with the tools you need to focus on your goals, get yourself set up so you make a killer first impression, and then find and pitch the clients that are right for your artwork. And I do it in the most straightforward, simple way possible. Nothing extra, just distraction-free lessons and to-do lists, plus 
insights from an industry insider that will help you get the confidence you need to move forward. The most exciting thing is hearing from my students about landing their first client or licensing contract as they start taking the proactive approach that I am such a fan of. You don't need to spend years building a portfolio of hundreds of patterns and illustrations, and you don't need to get stuck comparing yourself to artists on Instagram. What you need is to take concrete steps forward to build the career that you want. And Start Your Surface Pattern Business is all about taking imperfect action. If you've got a portfolio of designs that you've been building and you're ready to level up, enroll to get started today. Click the link to learn more about Start Your Surface Pattern Business or watch more of my videos here.